Hello YouTube, new tutorial for the lift today and its name is the Arnold Race. You can't see my face but it doesn't matter, you don't need to to be able to perform that lift. So there's another name for that lift, if you type Power Race you'll find it as well. I'm the only person who calls it Arnold Race. Why? Because I learned it from Arnold himself, I watched a video of him doing it. So this is a lift for the shoulder as most phrases are. And the, the little caveat with this lift is that it's unilateral, so you train it one arm at a time. I'm usually the, not the biggest advocate of unilateral movements, but they have their place sometimes. And in this case, using only one arm is going to allow you to hit the muscle a different way. So basically what this lift is going to do, it's going to target the lateral and the rear heads of the delt, which are spaces, that, which are muscles, that are usually not targeted well enough by naturals and therefore it creates a vacuum for size. If you hit those muscles regularly, your shoulders will become capped, you'll have more of a 3D effect. Depending on how much shoulders you want, this can be interesting. The reason why I like this lift over something, for example, like uh, a, a bent over lateral raise is because for me the issue with the lateral raise is that it recruits too much traps and in my case the traps overpower the real delt and they still they, they are like parasitic towards the activation of the muscle so it's not a good fit for me you'll also find that with this lift you get a better stretch and for me i find that the rear head of the delt responds very well to the stretch it doesn't mean that the lateral raises are not good it means that for people like me or you, it might not be the best choice. So we're going to get into it. You do this lift with a dumbbell, okay? You can do it with plates if you want. Don't do it with a barbell, please. I highly suggest on this lift to use a forced grip or a thumbless grip. Why? That way you're not going to be using too much of the lower arm. You're not going to use too much wrist. I encourage you to always use a force grip on your raises, you'll find that it helps activate the shoulders much more. So as I said with this lift, the specificity of the lift is going to be that the range of motion and the stretch is going to be quite extreme. When you train the shoulders with a lot of range of motion, you need to be very careful because it's a joint that has an insane amount of mobility, but that's also its weak point because it means that it's very weak at the extremities of the range of motion. You can go into so much of a flexion that you snap something in the shoulder. The joint will go further and beyond the, the mobility that you actually have. And even if you're not robust throughout the range of motion, it will force you into a position where something snaps. This is a lift that you're going to therefore do with low weight. Do not load this. Do not do three rep maxes with this. You're going to do I want to say 8 to 12 reps on this and it needs to stay easy. You don't push it on this lift, okay? Because this, it's very easy to injure your shoulder on that lift because of the range of motion and because of the extreme stretch at the bottom. What you're going to also want to do with this lift, you're going to start low. Even if you have strong shoulders, start low. Why? Because the stretch and the feeling you're going to get is unmatched. You've never felt that. And I say that because... Even if you have done raises, most people do raises standing up. Meaning what? Meaning that the range of motion at the bottom of the raise is limited by your body. The weight bounce off of your body. Meaning that you cannot overextend the shoulder because your body is blocking you. In this variation of the raise, there is nothing blocking the shoulder. The shoulder can overextend all it wants. And I've heard horror story of people that massively injured their shoulders on this. So be careful, approach this carefully. So what you're gonna do, you get your dumbbell, light dumbbell, always after a warm up. This is not a lift, you do cold. You grab with your thumbless grip, you're going to position yourself on the bench with your arm acting as cushion here, and also to create space in between you and the bench so that you have more space and your arm doesn't touch the floor. This might be difficult to do if the bench is not high enough. You get in position, you create space, you let the arm fully stretch here, and from this position, you raise all the way here, okay? So this is the top of the positive of the movement. The rear head of the delt is flexed, the median head is flexed. 
and you will sense that your upper back is stabilizing everything. Here, the joint is locked. There's no stretch on the muscle. This is easy to maintain. Okay? And when you go down, you go down slow. I'm going way too slow here, but just to show you the movement. And when you're here, you let the movement carry you under the bench and you use the momentum to stretch and back up. And when you finish, same position, flex, squeeze the muscle, and down again. Okay? Ultimately, your goal is going to make sure that you don't bounce the forearm against the bench. So you're going to, short, you're going to stop short of the bench. You let it stretch up. And you're going to find that I shift my hips and I allow my head to tilt. Why? I go with the movement. If I didn't move, this would happen. Okay? So now I'm cutting my range of motion. I don't want that. So I'm going to have to clear the distance between me and the bench that is created by my arm. And as I go down and here, up again. Okay? The key, the interesting part of the movement is right here. This is a massive stretch on the shoulder. Okay? That's what you want to suffer through. That's what's going to make you grow. If you're here, and then you go back here, you can, if you want, use some momentum like this, okay? Because ultimately, as I said, what you want is that thing here. It's the negative. It's the negative that is going to give you the most gains on that lift. The positive is going to be interesting. Why? Because it reverses the negative. So it stretches the muscle to its limit and then it bounces back up. It uses the energy it just stored. And of course, full range of motion movements are always better, especially if they have both the negative and the positive. And since you're going to have to do the positive to get through a negative again, you're not going to skip the positive on that lift. But if you want to squeeze some extra reps, you can. Just doing those few things, my shoulder, the back of my shoulder is on fire you will, on that lift, still feel some trap activation. But because of the torso angle, you will find that what you feel is not the upper trap, it's the mid trap that is going to burn. And it's the back of the shoulder mostly. So for people like me who tend to recruit way too much upper trap, when they do, they do their lateral raises, this is a good thing. You also find, and that's the reason why I spoke about unilateral movements, is that when you use only one arm to perform the movement, you can really focus on the muscle activation and the mind-muscle connection, which is usually not the case with bilateral movements. So that's another good thing about this lift. A little last thing, but it goes with the injury prevention thing. If you use momentum to squeeze a few negatives and add more tonnage to the rear, rear head of the delt, be careful because when you swing, again, you risk potentially hurting the shoulder. You want to first master the lift with low weight and perfect strict form, and then you're going to potentially do forced negatives with it, which it's a very good way to do forced negatives because it's very easy to gain momentum to get the positive up. So that is going to be that for this lift. If you want a good isolation movement for the shoulder, especially the medium and the rear heads, Try this for size. It's an actual very good movement for isolation. You don't need to do a thousand sets like a lot of people do for rear head of the delt. You can do four to eight sets a week, eight to 12 reps, and you will see changes in your the, the, the uh, rear head of the shoulder. For me, it, the change has been night and day. Now I have actually, a, well, it actually pucks back. So if, if you want to develop that head, and you are looking for the isolation movement to do that, I highly suggest that you do Arnold raises. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.